Welcome to West 57. Our first story tonight is about gun running, drug smuggling, the CIA, and the White House. It's complicated, but it's a story that raises serious questions about whether White House officials knowingly broke the law. The law in this case was laid down in 1984, when Congress specifically barred all American officials from giving weapons, ammunition, or any military aid to the Contras. The Contras are the guerrillas who are fighting to overthrow the Sandinista government of Nicaragua. President Reagan just yesterday personally appealed once again to resume military aid to the Contras. Late today, the House narrowly approved $100 million for them. But what many of the congressmen weren't aware of before that vote is the following allegation. That the White House secretly directed a private aid network to arm the Contras when it was illegal for the White House to do that. This is a story that takes many roads, involves many people, but where all of them intersect is at a place called John Hall Farm. Northern Costa Rica, 30 miles from the Nicaraguan border in the Contra War. This is John Hall country. He's an American who's lived here more than 20 years. He owns or manages 8,000 acres along the Contra's southern front. I'm a rancher, a farmer, and absolutely nothing else. Just an Indiana boy transplanted in, in northern Costa Rica. Indiana boy transplanted. What is the extent of your involvement with the Contras? Indirectly, I've helped Contras through a humanitarian effort uh, to help their wounded, to get people wounded in here and get them to the hospital. And I've never made any secret of that. It's been absolutely open. I wouldn't know anything about John Hall unless John Hall told me. And how many people would come up to you and say, I'm the CIA guy in Costa Rica? In the spring of last year, mercenary Stephen Carr spent five weeks around John Hall's farm training Contras. He broke probation when he went to join the Contra War. He's now serving time in an American jail. Carr says John Hall supplied the Contras their food and their weapons. John was the man in Costa Rica. He told you where you're going. We want this here. We want that there. He was the organizer. Stephen Carr is a liar. Stephen Carr is a boy that's been in trouble all of his life. He's some of the dregs of humanity that the communists use to produce misinformation, to push their point across anywhere. Peter Glibery is another mercenary who trained Contras, taking his orders, he says, from John Hall. He took us to see the campsite where he worked along the border in 1985. We met John Hall on uh, the 9th March, and we flew out uh, of Miami uh, Sunday 10th. Um, where did you meet him? I met him in the, in the, in the uh, restaurant of the Howard Johnson Hotel, opposite Miami Airport. Essentially, he wanted to know our military skills, uh, how long we were prepared to commit to the war for. What kinds of things did he ask you about your military skills? He wanted to know if we could use 60mm mortars, if we knew how to use a 50 caliber Browning machine gun. This campsite, he claims, is on land John Hall controls. He started telling us about this uh, friend of his on the National Security Council. What did he say? He said, uh, my friend sends me $10,000 a month uh, for the support of the FDN in Costa Rica. Did he ever tell you what the $10,000 a month was for? Um, yes, it was for paying the military commandante, also providing food, the rice and the beans, and the ammunition for the troops in the field. The firing ranges were up over on that hill. And... Uh, this is, where we, this is the log where we used to sit and drink coffee with the Civil Guard in the morning. So. <laughs> How many of you were living here? Um, 14 or 15. There were three trainers and the rest were conscious. Do you know anybody on the National Security Council? No, I do not. It's the same as, as you say with the CIA. I probably wouldn't know them if they walked in the door. There are many allegations that have been made that surround his farms, that surround him individually. And he is certainly one of the figures that we would like to know more about as part of this investigation. Democratic Senator John Kerry, who sits on the Foreign Relations Committee, has been investigating whether the White House secretly violated the congressional ban on military aid to the Contras. That investigation is in its fifth month. If, in fact, they have been trying to circumvent the will of Congress and provide aid notwithstanding that, that seems to me to be a very serious infraction. It's a, it's a constitutional violation. It's an infringement 
uh, on the stated law of this country, if you will. How do you know all these mercenaries? How do they know you? They came through here on their way. We talked to them. Uh, they stayed overnight. They had breakfast here, and, and they wanted to know where to go and how which road to take to get to the northern border. They say you were running country operations on land that you own or manage. That's not true. Never have? Never have. I never will. Did you ever use this farm for camp for your contract? Two. Until this year, Eden Pastor ran the largest contra operation on the southern front. He was supplied off and on for four years by the CIA. He says John Hall was a critical link in the CIA supply line, receiving weapons from the United States, storing them, and moving them out to the contra troops. If, he, if I told you he says he doesn't work for the CIA, he says he was never involved in any of this stuff, he says he was merely a man who transported the wounded. Is that true? Bueno, este juego su palabra con el de la CIA. Well, it's his word against that of the CIA. El jefe de la CIA, pues, en Costa Rica, a mí me dijo que era de la CIA. The head of the CIA in Costa Rica told me that he was CIA. You're certain he did things other than just transport wounded soldiers? Usted es cierto que él hizo cosas afuera de, de transportar heridos. Soldados heridos. Me transportó a mí. He transported me. Into 1985, secret weapons shipments from the United States were being moved to El Salvador. One of those shipments flew out of Fort Lauderdale's executive airport in March. Destined, those who loaded it say, for John Hall's farm. We loaded a shipment of arms, about six tons. There was machine guns, 60s, motor tubes, C4. Jesus Garcia is an avid Contra supporter, in jail in Miami on a weapons charge. He says the CIA sanctioned the shipment. The arms were for John Hall. For John Hall? John Hall's farm. For whom? For John Hall. Was the CIA behind the weapons shipment or the National Security Council or the White House in any way that you're aware of? I don't know about directly, but I know they, they had to have had knowledge. Absolutely. There's no way you can circumvent all the things. There's no way you can land in a military airport in El Salvador with a plane at a military airport unless somebody cleared it. A charter, commercial, civilian plane lands at a military airport. Somebody had to arrange it. Somebody had to arrange that. Anybody ever checked the plane? <laughs> what do you mean, check the plane? They unloaded it. Weapons and all. <laughs> I was really surprised. I thought we were going to land on a dirt strip and be sneaky about it. Not these guys. They're saying that you were involved in running weapons down to Costa Rica for the country. What do you say to that? Tell me to talk to your lawyer. See, uh, yeah, you better talk to my lawyer about it. That's the main thing. Rene Corbo, a Cuban-American from Miami, arranged that Fort Lauderdale shipment, according to those on board the plane. Corbo is said to be one of Hull's key operatives, said to have commanded a camp inside Nicaragua that John Hull allegedly supplied. The allegation runs that there was a load gathered in Miami, including 20 millimeter cannons, fifth caliber machine guns, mortars, high explosives, loaded up on a plane in Fort Lauderdale, taken through El Salvador, and then landed here at John Hall's farm. That's flat not true. I can guarantee you 1,000% that isn't true. Do you know John Hall? Yes, I do. How is it that you know him? How is it? Yeah. Well, I don't want to talk about that, okay? Why not? Because I, I don't want it. Do you know Rene Corbo? I have met Rene Corbo th there again one time. He came, he came into my... I might have met him twice. What if it was just gun running? Okay, so the administration supports these guys. Aid got tight. They needed guns. So they got a private group to run the United States down Congress there. very specifically prohibited and declared its intent not to have weapons as part of our relationship with the Contras. Now, we made that clear. We denied them lethal aid. That is precisely what the vote is about today. What we were doing was illegal? Of course it was illegal. Well, you're hiring mercenaries, which that's uh, neutrality violations. You're running weapons, that's firearms violations. Uh, you're plotting to kill people, that's conspiracy to murder. I mean, you could write a law book on some of the things that these people do. 
Jack Carroll was a military commander for a private American group that had been supplying trainers for the Contras. He is now a critical witness for Senator Kerry. He says he met twice with John Hall and this man named Robert Owen to plan Contra operations. And I came to know him as the NSC representative to the Costa Rican situation acting in behalf of uh, Colonel Oliver North. You're saying Rob Owen was a go-between between Costa Rica and the White House? The National Security the National Council? National Security Council, White House. yes, he was, he was the bag man for Ollie North. Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North is on the White House National Security Council. He reportedly designed and directed the Contra Aid Network. Oliver North refused our request for an interview. Robert Owen, his alleged intermediary, received $50,000 of American tax money designated for Contra humanitarian aid. A State Department source said, quote, it was a payoff. Robert Owen also refused our request for an interview. Would you put Robert Owen under oath? I, I'd love to put Mr. Owen under oath and a number of other people. Sure, his name has been uh, certainly essential to this. Uh, Owen told me, he said, well, I take $10,000 a month to John Hull from NSC for these types of operations, and if we need more money, that's no problem. Oh, I've met Rob on several occasions. Like I say, we're personal friends. Uh, I have no business dealings with Rob whatsoever. I have no idea even who the fellow works for. We're friends. We've met a few times, and that's all there is to it. Where have you met? Uh, like I say, I've met him in Washington. I've seen him when he was here. When he came here, he called me when he was in this country. In the time frames, I don't remember, but it's no big deal and not, not a lot of time. What were you doing? What was he doing in this country when he called you? I have no idea. I have no idea. What did you do for a living? I have no idea. Why are you so certain that if all this is true, and John Hall, in fact, did have connections with the NSC, that Washington would know that weapons were being shipped in? There's, there's no conceivable way they could not know what John was doing. There are also allegations that the NSC was aware that members of the private aid network were involved in smuggling drugs. The Drug Enforcement Agency told us this part of Costa Rica was a major transshipment point for cocaine bound for Miami. Allegations of drug running have surfaced centering around the private airstrip on and around John Hall Farm. According to many in the private aid network, some of the same secret routes used to bring weapons to the Contras carried cocaine back to the United States. Contra suppliers taking advantage of their covert connections to run cocaine. Airstrips have been set up. Clandestine flights have been set up. Uh, the uh, law enforcement agencies have kind of been pushed aside or pulled back in certain instances. There is evidence of that. And it's been made easier for these people to then turn to use that access to our shores as well as to the shores of another country for illicit purposes. Run drugs. That's, that's what it appears. That's correct, to run drugs. Did you ever hear anything about John Hall and drug smuggling? Did you ever see anything? No supe que John Hall estuviera ligado al, al narcotráfico, pero mucho de lo que pasaba por sus pistas de aterrizaje sí supe que estaban ligados al narcotráfico. I didn't know that John Hall was linked to narcotics trafficking, but I did know that what, much of what came through his landing strip was linked to nar narcotics trafficking. What was the flight plan? Colombia, Costa Rica, Costa Rica, Miami. Colombia to Costa Rica, Costa Rica to Miami. I have no contact with anybody in the drug business. I have never let a drug plane land or be refueled on any airport here at any time. We've got a cancer here. It's like Watergate. It's not going away. There is great possibilities here that this could become Contragate. It could have the same ramifications. It has certainly got a parallel start. Do you consider yourself a real American patriot? I sure do. And a real nice fellow. The CIA declined comment on this story except to say that they always comply with congressional restrictions in Central America. The White House today quoted Colonel Oliver North as calling the private aid network nonsense. The White House also said, quote, the president never approved any such plan, end quote. Yesterday, two congressmen filed a formal request demanding White House records of any contact between Oliver North, Robert Owen, 
้นจานหอบ